Hey guys, welcome to Science Plus, where we apply the science. Today, um, I am watching and reacting to Game Theory We Were Right All Along, which is an Ultima Custom Night theory made by Matt Pat himself. Um, I've already watched it, I've been requested to react to it. So, I, I mean, I've completely forgot the theory already. But um, I watched it as soon as it came out because I couldn't resist. And then people are telling me to react to it and t tell you guys my thoughts on it. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to tell you my thoughts rather than kind of react to it and laugh. Haha! <laughs> oh, that's wrong. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you my thoughts as we're going through it as well. So, without further ado... Without... Blah, 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 we're going to watch this and... We're going to see what MatPat says. I know it was a good theory when I first watched it, but I can't remember what it was. So, let's begin. He's got a toy chica thingy, hasn't he? Toy MatPat of the high school years. Perfection. This is, this is actually perfection. Dear diary, yesterday was so amazing. I met such a wonderful guy. It's the eyes that are really creeping me out right now. Mine by the end of the Day, I just know it. I'll tell him that I've solved the lore of his games and control the timeline. And once he's there, I'll have him. And once I have him, he'll be mine forever. There's only one thing that could possibly go wrong. <laughs> How can Mangle? How can Mangle be walking around in FNAF 2 That's before all the I'm animatronics under. are possessed? How can Springtrap be experimenting with the Remnant when he's sealed in a wall? I, They're good questions. I, answer me! I don't know. That he doesn't know the answer That's to. Exactly what I, I bet he doesn't. I bet he doesn't actually have a timeline. He's just like, no! somebody solve it, please. No! Hello, Internet! Welcome, Welcome to, to Game, Game Theory. Theory. Getting burned by hippos since 2018. Not every story has to have significance, you know? Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes a story is just a story. You try to read into every little thing and find meaning in everything anyone says, you'll just drive yourself crazy. Thanks, kinda, Scott. Uh, kinda harsh there, Scott. Speaking of stories, yeah. <laughs> last map theory, I was at the lowest of lows. The survival logbook threw a lot of weird curveballs into the lore that I, and I don't think anyone was really expecting. Reveals like Michael Afton being the bite victim were interesting, but also- Which I completely agree with. ...difficult to explain away, and that's where things sat until now. With both the release of the final FNAF book, The Fourth Closet, and- I have read it yet. I need to, I need to read all the books Super in FNAF one. Brothers Ultimate. They're all here. And now, with both these releases, we're finally in a position to see all the puzzle pieces we're working with. Which means one last examination of the franchise from top to bottom. Starting with Custom Night this week, and then next week, stepping back and looking across the entire timeline to see if we can wrap things up in a neat blood-soaked yeah. bow now that we can see all so the So, I'm also making a timeline, so and I'm, I know it's a coincidence that we're both doing it at the same time, time for me to pull a but I did make an intro about a month ago, a story of anger and that never dies. I'm excited. A story to tell you guys my opinion. <laughs> I'm not just talking about me trying to write these theories. Today, I tell you the story of how Ultimate Custom Night ends the FNAF franchise in the same place where it all began. As soon as you start playing Custom Night, you can tell that Scott's up to his usual tricks. Yeah, that. But beyond being gay, that scared me so game, much when the first jump scare happened. Taking a game that most of us assumed was just a fun little add-on to Capstone the series, yeah. and has used it but to it's actually a canon, full and we know that now. Canon addition to the brand. Technically, the FNAF the world could be canon as well, but it's very unlikely. Once you die, which is pretty nice considering you die a lot in this game. A lot. <laughs> Yeah, I totally let Nightmare on kill me at 3 a.m. on Thursday. <laughs> I just really wanted to see what she would say in this case. What, you guys don't believe me? Seriously, I'm good at this game! I did it for the lore! I did it for the lore! Through these death lines, we can immediately start piecing together what exactly is going on here. The first set of lines reveals that we're powerless to escape. You yeah. and I will be making music together for a long, long time! You won't wait for them. Yep. Powerless. Yeah. Music to me. More voice lines indicate that not only are we trapped here for all eternity, we also can't die. Meaning or that these people more, don't necessarily die, like who we're playing as, so it must be William. What a gift to relish. 
I've been doing with that kind of perish. Let's Again and again and again. That's one of my favorite lines of the game. You won't get tired, tired of dying, will really. you? By the way, for those of you who don't have an encyclopedic knowledge of every yeah. element of this franchise, Foxy Fighters. Like line, it's a such a little callback to one of my favorite moments in the franchise. What? Yeah. Foxy Fighters update 1.2 for Fnatic. You don't get tired of my voice, will you? So anyway, our character here is kind of screwed. I would do it higher pitch, but I've already done it on my channel once. Don't want to watch that. Pretty obvious what's going on here, but I think Jacko Chica really sums up the situation best. The fire within me burns eternal, and now you shall as well. That's right. We're trapped in heck. H E double hockey sticks. Or toothpicks, like my family always said, since we valued proper capitalization. And from there, it's just a hop, skip, and a karmic jump away from who we're playing as. Yeah. None other than Springtrap himself. Yeah, because the hell relates to Not the only ending. Does a one way FNAF to hell follow speech. up on the advice Henry gave us yeah, from FNAF that, 6. There we go. Although for one of you, the darkest pit of hell has Oh, something I noticed, the trees. It looks like trees. I noticed that yesterday. Um, it looks like he's in a forest, so that could signify that um, he's the only one who went to hell. Not one. This is a callback to FNAF 4's worst yeah, your so can't be Mike. Do you still believe that? But I can't be Henry, our character were someone like even though he did say it, he it ends for all of us, but it did not make sense for any of the other die, characters to play Bear would play single us out as not his friend. He's not an enemy to Michael because Michael never did anything to hurt him. William Afton killed Henry's daughter, who goes on to become the puppet. Nightmare on here is the dark reflection of the puppet, mm -hmm. thereby confirming Ooh, that we're playing as William Afton. Even Ballora offers some clues that we're playing as William. Admit it. You wanted to let me in. Ballora saw However, it's weird that Night Marion isn't actually canon to the story, so it's, that's very death, weird. Which left an empty room and an empty, empty tomb. tomb in his life. Is an empty room. An empty tomb. He shut everyone else there. out, but now that we're in <laughs> William's personal hell, she's able to call him out for all his hidden feelings. William yep. wanted to let the woman that Ballora and she's like, um, in, but he just couldn't do she it. She says something like, her these strange circumstances that we can be together again. And so that would mean that they were together, and so if it was mother and father, then of course the they're together. The past for all eternity. Sound familiar? It should. It was my Your first, first ever episode. Ever I love that. That's Yo, so good. I don't know if Scott did that on purpose or. Series, I but I love that. It was a game about someone trapped in it's a full circle, tormented by their crimes for all eternity. Granted, the series had only just begun, and the theory tied everything back to a real-life string of murders. But it's actually really. Awesome that theory was true. Come full circle. When that only FNAF one was out. When FNAF two came out, this proved it. Circle back around to where it all began. It's poetic. A beautiful, horrific, child murdery bookend of a story. So thanks, Scott. I have no doubt that you struck your It just signifies the whole FNAF time. I'm just going so round and round in so circles. At the very end, You're gonna get in the center. years of getting thwarted by your twisting story. It's very nice of you to throw me a bone. Might as well call me Bangle. <laughs> More on that next week. But of course, it wouldn't be FNAF if things right, not were just that simple. No, it's Mangle not is the dog. to be held in a perpetual state of agony. There's something keeping us here. Looking through all the voice lines, there's one other entity that's mentioned over and over again. The one you should, the not, one have you should not have killed. Mm -hmm. I have remade, but not by you, by, by the, the one you should, you should not, not have, have killed. Greetings from the fire, and by the, the one you should not have killed. Have killed. Um, excuse me, what? The one I yeah. shouldn't have killed? You mean Voldemort? Oh, sorry, got him confused with you, must not be named. But seriously, the one I shouldn't have killed in a franchise piled high with underage bodies? Okay, yeah, yeah but one sure, of them all those is other special. kids, nah, um, they deserved it. But that one, that one right there, yeah. yep, shouldn't have touched him, now you're damned for all eternity. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Anyway, this is the big mystery of the game. Who are they talking about? Well, by picking apart clues from all sorts of different locations, we can start piecing together who this one who must stay vague for lore purposes actually is. First, from the rest of the voice lines, we can identify that this character is a male. Then that means it can't be Cassidy. 
Money. Okay, <laughs> Golden Freddy. Let this prove that. Them use the pronouns he and him. We I mean, I never saw him as Cassidy, but everyone's saying that Cassidy is Golden Freddy, which I am not too to sure. Our attention to the true stars of Ultimate Custom Night, the mediocre melodies. <laughs> Without question, this crew of duct crawling rejects steal the spot. Yeah, I have a problem with this. I'll tell you about that at the end. WTF are these guys doing here in FNAF 6 to break out meme stars in Custom Night? Orville Elephant and the gang not only provide important life lessons. He proceeded to pour me a glass of just ice cold lemonade. Ooh, you ever mix it with iced tea? You do like. A little half lemonade, half oh, it's so you should try it some. Well, you can't because you're dead. They <laughs> also deliver on huge lore reveals. For the most part, their lines are pretty disposable, but very rarely you'll get a line from them that feels just a bit out of character. Yeah, there's a second you layer to the voice. Just begun. I will never let you leave. I will never let you rest. I'll never let you rest. <laughs> Would you? Ninja skills. And if you listen closely, you'll hear a female voice echoing back what they're saying. Yeah, Mr. Hip, um, Ned Bauer is good for this. This is how it feels. And you, you get, get to experience yeah. it over and over and, and over, over again. again. Forever. I will never, I will let, never you. let you leave. Now, this voice could be baby. Not only does she sound similar, it's very similar. I guess you forgot about me. But a clue may also come from the merch. The Funko action yeah. figurines mm. and characters from FNAF 6 all contain one piece of scrap baby. Collect all the figurines, collect all the pieces to form the character. Which might seem like just a random detail until you consider that they did the same thing with every character in Sister mm. Location. That is very weird. Enter. Each one and a piece that helped to create what it's something cool. It's, it's very just like Enter good itself, to point out. A bunch of the other animatronics all rolled into to one entity. This is especially important when you consider that a key reveal from the final FNAF novel, The Fourth Closet, is that William Afton created the living sister location Funtime animatronics by extracting remnant from the melted conglomeration of all the OG animatronics and injecting the new robots with it. Thus, all the new robots were alive and sharing a piece of the same set of souls. Just like if the pieces of baby so in other words, there's five souls and then to form they're going round to the front. That's whatever. why baby's means job postings. So of course, for this game, Scott needed to make a ton of casting calls on the site Voices.com. Yep. All I've identifying seen all the roles that the actors would be mm -hmm. playing. Some of the roles were obvious: Nightmare Balloon Boy, Pig Patch, Wither Chica, etc., etc. All characters. Yeah. And then there were familiar. five, I think. Other that casting you calls, out. though, were a bit more vague. Monster, character in Whisper, Little Girl, Annoying Girl, Vengeful Spirit. Yeah, now, just so that people can look on voice.com and say, Oh my god, uh, confirm character, who is this person and that person. Monster is Jack Ochica. Character in yeah. Whisper is Trash in the Gang. Little Girl is the Puppet. Annoying Girl is Dee Dee. Scott kept him vague so as not to ruin any surprises. You can actually identify each and every role, except for one. Vengeful Spirit, mm. played by Tabitha Skate. It's the only one that doesn't match up to any explicit character in the game. But we know for a fact it exists since God himself left Tabitha okay. an excellent review. Five stars. Well done, Tabitha. So what is the vengeful spirit? Well, according to the casting call, quote, this is for the voice of a young child who speaks in a whisper from the shadows. That sounds a lot like the voice from that the shadows. in the background of our merry band of rejects. This child oh, is God. in control and is toying with the player who's helpless to change their situation or prevent their inevitable End. Yeah, well, being trapped in H-E double hockey sticks will do that to ya. The gender should not be immediately clear. It should work as either a young boy or a young girl. And you're welcome to do readings leaning one way or another. Ding, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we have our winner. A puppeteer that's manipulated in the shadows. A spirit who's out for revenge. A spirit who just so happens to occasionally show its face during game over screens. Yes, that creepy image of a face that's been haunting thumbnails of Ultimate Custom Night, that is the face face of our vengeful spirit. A spirit who, based on its last line, has an axe to grind and intends to enact revenge by keeping us tormented for all eternity. He tried to release you. He tried to release us. But I'm not gonna let that happen. I will hold you here. I will keep you here. No matter how many times they burn us. 
He tried to release you, but I'm not going to let that happen. I will hold you here. <laughs> Yikes. Somebody's <laughs> got to get themselves a new hobby. But this is an important line, since by now, many of you have probably seen the Old Man Consequences Easter egg. If you set the character Old Man Consequences to level 1 difficulty and then complete his yeah. main game, you get taken you through this. a glitch to Old Man Consequences Pond, a character from that world to which demons. encourages the spirit to, quote, leave the demon to his demons. Rest your own soul there's nothing else. He's encouraging the angry spirit to finally rest, to yeah. give it up, to move on, That's instead exactly of just Dorcas chasing down well. the demon William Afton and spending eternity in acting revenge. But that all leads to the question, who is this vengeful spirit? The one William should not have killed. Well, it's Golden Freddy. For proof, look no further than... Yeah, but who is Golden Freddy? Because, the nearly of course, he made the video score of where he was trying to figure out the, the survival of the stuff. At full difficulty, you and see people Freddy came to the conclusion of of Cassidy. He hasn't said anything about Cassidy yet, and I'm not sure if that's just a really random thing, or if it's actually something that we solved, or He's if Cassidy can like be the puppet, the or if, if it's Three. definitely Someone Golden Freddy, what's it gonna do with her, like, why is she Someone so special? Always comes back. And just to dispel any confusion here, Golden Freddy isn't the crying child. No. This confirms it. Golden Freddy is actually a victim that we've never actually seen outside of the FNAF 3 minigames, nor will ever see outside of that face in the vent. But more on that next video. That final we've never final seen outside the FNAF 3 minigames. If you want to make sure that you see it, hit subscribe now. That way so it's not the vengeful it. spirit from FNAF 3. Wraps everything up. If there was ever a time to subscribe... Now okay, I think that's it, isn't it? Is it? through the Happiest Day minigame. Fazbear Fright was burned down in an attempt to cleanse Freddy's. Pizzeria Simulator was burned to the ground. None of it has worked. The spirit of revenge is and always will be there until he chooses to let go. That's why he's still twitching as he fades into the darkness. That's why his eyes are still white as he disappears. He is choosing to remain here, to continue tormenting William, to ignore Old Man Consequences, encouraging him to move on to the next life. You know, this might be what Scott truly meant when he said that 50-20 mode in this game was impossible. Not just that it would be unbelievably difficult to overcome, which, let's face it, it is, but that there's no victory here. That no matter how yeah. good of a player you are, there is no winning this game because there is no escape. That even if you play it perfectly, William is trapped, and there is no happy ending for Golden Freddy. In fact, you playing the game is continuing Golden Freddy's cycle of revenge. Old Man Correct. Consequences' message might be for Golden Freddy. Absolutely right your soul. There is nothing else, but it's also probably directed at us. I mean, we play and play and play this game for hours upon hours upon hours, achieving higher and higher and higher stats in the game. Yes, Dorco. It's really difficult, and what do we get from it? A cutscene that's kind of underwhelming, actually. Perhaps Old Man Consequences message was for Golden Freddy, sure, but also for us. Rest your own soul. There is nothing else. There is no deeper ending here. There is no satisfaction. This is it. And by choosing to play, we keep William's cycle of torment alive. We are literally Golden Freddy forcing William through this over and over and over again. Refusing to move on. Refusing to accept that there is nothing else. It's perhaps the most satisfying, unsatisfying conclusion in all of gaming. And as far as your gameplay affecting character decisions, well, it doesn't get any more seamless than that. In the end, the truth is as plain as day. You are Golden Freddy. Next week, the grand conclusion as I break down literally everything else cool. in this game and all the other games and yeah. the books as we try to... Um, well, when he says you are Golden Freddy, he means... I guess he means, like... As the good guy, we're Golden Freddy, as which we're not releasing William, um, but we play as William, of course. So, there's a few things I've got, like, I think everything, he, I think he's right about everything. Um, a few queries I have, which I know he's going to clear up in the next episode, because of course he does that. But, um, who is Golden Freddy? We need to know that. Um, we know Cassidy is a very high possibility. But what's so special about Cassidy that, you know, it was it was it her birthday party? No, it wasn't. Like, um, she was, like, it, it doesn't make sense. Why can she teleport around? Why is the Golden Freddy suit so powerful with Cassidy in it? Um, why can she crash the game? Why is Golden Freddy so special when the soul wouldn't be so special? What's special about Cassidy and stuff? Um... 
But the one big thing that I worry about is the fact that even though he says, and it's very good evidence, that there's a baby voice inside of the mediocre melodies. Um, each one of the mediocre, each one of the mediocre melodies has their own child's soul inside of it, as portrayed by the Happiest Day mini game. So in the Happiest Day mini game, we've got um, all of the mediocre melodies: Mr. Hippo, um, Orville, Ned Bear, Happy Frog, and the other one. <laughs> Um, the other one. Um, we got all five of them in like this heaven where the puppet's giving them life or no, um, setting them free or whatever. And that's the happiest day mini game. But it wouldn't make sense if it was just one soul controlling all five of them. So I don't know how he's going to clear that up. Anyway, um, I've got my timeline coming very soon. So I hope you are excited for that. Please subscribe for more content like this. If you want to see me react to other other ones of Matt Pat's videos, then I will be sure to do that. But thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you later. Goodbye!